When you did eventually become a, a United player, it was quite early in Sir Alex Ferguson's reign. And the first thing you did was ask him for a pay rise. How, how did that go for you? Because you have done your research. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it uh, seems like a very brave move. It was an easy thing to ask for because I was actually earning more money in Bermuda doing summer jobs than I was as a, as a YT player at United. And I just thought, is this what they get paid? So Sir Alex Ferguson had, had gave me uh, an increase. It was, it was a big increase. 40 pounds. Whoa. <laughs> At what point did it become sort of apparent to you that you weren't going to get into the United first team? Uh, when I, when I sat in his office and he said, someone wants you, and <laughs> you're not going to get in my team. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, but I needed that. And, and, and the reality was I did need to move down um, to a level or two to, to get my more understanding of the game. So it was the right move for me to move on. Would it be fair to say you, you didn't enjoy your early years at Rotherham? I, I saw there's a quote uh, from your book. Uh, the theory at Rotherham was that we weren't good enough to keep the ball. So we had to be fit enough to win it back. And, and that was the philosophy probably amongst a lot of managers at, at that time and era. And that was almost twice a week you were doing these grueling physical sessions. And, you know, we're already sports sciences then. And that, that was the test in time of how much I really wanted to be a professional player. It was really asking me that question because it makes you think like, is this what it's about for the rest of my career of playing? While you were at Rotherham, were the people back home in Bermuda aware, like, would, would they be following your progress? What we typically did was we used to get the games recorded and have them aired back in Bermuda so Bermuda public can actually see them. So does this mean there's kind of a load of middle-aged men wandering around Bermuda who support Rotherham? You know, is that, is that their team? Or? Yeah, there'll be a fan base there. Oof, there'll be a fan base from... How bizarre. From my... <laughs> <laughs> After 11 years, you you stepped out for your first Premier League game. How did that feel? There's a lot of nerves, a lot of nerves before the game. Um, it's nerves as you're walking on the pitch, but the nerves go once the game starts, you know, because that's, that's your normality. That's, your, that's where you belong, that's, that's what you do. Uh, so that's where the, the calmness starts to settle in when, when the game, the whistle goes and, and the game is kicked off. Can you remember who your first game in the Premier League was against? I'm sitting there thinking, it, it was Everton, but I think Everton may have been my first Premier League goal. Goal. Uh, I, so, think, I think Everton was your first Premier League goal. Yeah, so not... Yeah. No, I should have no. remembered that. Yeah, you should. <laughs> should remember your debut, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, how, how would Sean Golter in his pomp have got on in a team up front with Aguero and Silva and Yaya Toure playing through the middle? Do you think he'd have done OK? I, yeah, easily. And I... I I'm not an arrogant person, I say that because in the City team, what you do know is you will get a chance as a forward. And my, my best spell, or certainly, you know, two, three years at City, I knew I was getting opportunities playing with players like Ali Benavia, Al Berkovic. I was sleeping like a baby because I knew I would get opportunities and, and that's what we have. Away from football, am I right in thinking you, you've never been a drinker? Is, is there any particular reason for that? Or Yeah, I've, I've, I mean, all the clubs I've been at, the lads always loved it because they thought, well, we've always got one designated lad who could make sure we get home safe. <laughs> and, and the one person they didn't want to see the next day in training was me. I don't want to know what I've done. Ah, yes. But it, the, the culture's changed because the demands of the, of the players and the game. But uh, in, in my time of playing, um, it was only myself. But I remember even a period when, um, when Andy Morrison had, had stopped uh, I settled down and we had the Christmas, the Christmas dinner and I, and I thought, well, Andy, <laughs> Andy's, not, Andy's not drinking and Andy's um, hanging about with me and I thought, Andy, you're making my night absolutely boring. <laughs> 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 Normally I, I'm having a good laugh at everybody being pissed. But <laughs> Your mum was a good footballer, so is, is that where the genes came from? Without doubt. She was huge in the football. Uh, she used to always take me uh, two games. I used to always go watch, watch her play. So from there, that's where the, it really came from, the, the love of the game. And, um, and it's funny because when I used to go 
when I was sort of like nine and ten and playing for my school team and I'd play and, and score a couple of goals, say, oh, mom, I scored like four goals. She's like, you could have scored seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> so she, Betty. <laughs> she, she was your biggest critic yeah. after Kevin Keegan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I've never drunk a pint of lager. Uh, what? I've, no. Nah. What, what, what's your poison then? I drink Malibu and Coke. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.